saw this thing, Samsung thing. I guess it's a rumor. Well, it's more than a rumor. It's a, a patent application, a patent filing, which leads to speculation in the smartphone world. Matters to smartphone people who follow this kind of thing. They're waiting for the next, whatever the next thing is in smartphones. It's hard to know. One thing that has been happening, and this patent builds on that, is the increasing uh, multiplication of camera modules. It's incredible. Camera modules? Like the number of cameras on a smartphone. It's getting out of hand, right? Do you think there's a limit? <laughs> the entire back of the phone. I don't know. If this patent here is any kind of indication for us about what's going on, then maybe there is no limitation. Hmm. Maybe it's all the cameras all the time. I don't know. Hmm. I mean, they're still they're trying to figure out ways to sell us these things. And so you slam the cameras on there and you have something to market. You say, this is our difference. We got the one extra camera. So who who knows? It's What are we at right now? Four? Four is the thing that's going on. Mm -hmm. Five? Well, how about I give you six? Because that's what we're looking at here. Samsung patents a unique smartphone with five tilting cameras and one periscope lens. Six total. Five plus one, Will. It's a six. That equals six. This is very impressive. Mm -hmm. A whopping six cameras. Now, this patent was actually filed back in December 2019, a little while ago, but it doesn't show up in the offices publicly until now. Uh, this one here, June 11th, it showed up. And we have some uh, visual here. These are very basic, rudimentary drawings that would, would show up in a patent filing. You see the camera set up there. The W stands for wide. Those will be five wide-angle lenses and one telephoto, possibly periscope module as well. And an LED flash would then go beside that, creating a monstrous camera array on the back. Now, what's weird, I'm reading through this, and I see that each of these wide-angle cameras is going to have a tiltable image sensor. At least in this patent. I mean, this could be nothing. This could maybe, uh, they just patent. Do you know how this goes, Will? You put the patents out there, the patent applications. You try to get the patents, whether you plan on doing anything with it or not. Right. Sometimes they do that cost happens. a lot of money, though, right? A couple of bucks. Yeah. I would Samsung assume. has it. Well, Samsung, they, they got a healthy bank account. Yeah. It's all right for now. We'll see how things go in the future. But for now, they got a few dollars left in it. They can pay their bills. Yeah. Samsung. <laughs> anyway, that that's what makes this interesting to me. Obviously, uh, camera makers, phone makers, I call them camera makers because it's increasingly seeming like these things are cameras first, phone second. Phone makers are going to continue this progression towards the uh, biggest camera count. But, but then this, I saw this piece of the drawing. I think, why would you want to tilt an image sensor? Well, apparently, you can get an even wider field of view than what you would be able to get if you couldn't tilt an image sensor. According to the patent, the Samsung smartphone uses five wide-angle image sensors with a 28-millimeter focal length. So that's not that wide to begin with. But then, with this uh, tilting mode, apparently it can somehow increase the field of view, they can tilt towards, they can tilt horizontally or vertically. This enables the sensors to achieve a wider focal length overall and may even help in producing panoramic shots without moving the smartphone itself. Mm. Because they can move, you see, what I'm, you see what I'm doing here? I'm panning. Kind of, it's kind of, a, it's a, like a tripod pans on an axis. Mm. You thought I was joking, I was being serious. 360 though? Not 360, not all the way around. Oh, okay. But as you can see from the from the diagram there, certainly a significant amount of twist. Right. Not nothing. The tilting lenses are also said to offer a pano bokeh effect. What are we doing? What are we talking? I don't when's last time you took a panoramic photo? I got nothing against it. Very rare, but it happens. It it could Vacation. create What's that? Vacation. You're, when are you going on vacation? I said rare. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It happens. You know. I, hey, listen. It, it totally can, can happen. It probably should happen. There's, it's, an, it's a really effective method to, hmm. to create the, to give the experience or something closer to the experience of what it's like to be there if you're looking at a natural environment or something. Mm -hmm. Standing on a cliff and you have the whole, I'm not against it. 
But I'm, it's just not the thing you're using every day. No. And therefore, it's hard to imagine an audience a customer base that's clamoring for it. So I personally think there might be some other secret functionality, mm. like the ability to pick up tremendously more resolution through that activity, maybe stitch everything together. I don't I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just talking. Right. This guy talking. I'm not drawing these things. I'm not sitting in a boardroom drawing these things. They don't draw in the boardroom, but wherever it is, they draw. Anyway, if you scroll down a little further, you can see what these phones might look like. This uh, upcoming Galaxy 6 camera. Look at that baby right there. If that ain't pretty, I don't know what is. It it actually is really, really nice looking. I mean, if you gotta put you know? if you have to put six cameras, that's how you'd imagine doing it. Just keep it symmetrical, relatively symmetrical. But at that point, Will, you should just put on there, you don't need the flash anyways. Forget about the flash and just go with eight cameras, full symmetry. Mm. What do you say to that? The Samsung patent also goes in depth regarding the shortfalls of the system, with a notable one being the size of the camera module, since it will be housed in a flagship device. The device may need to have a pop-up mechanism to house the sensor to achieve the movement while maintaining thinness. That's incredible. Pop-up sensor. What are we doing? It's crazy. Oh, well, I'm cool with it. It's just a patent for now, but you can imagine more cameras on smartphones in the future, and who knows what type of technology... Uh, we're going to see and what these things are going to be capable of, but tilting image sensors on smartphones. Coming soon. Very impressive. Possibly. I got this article here. It's actually on a website, The Motley Fool, specializing. It's investor news. It's a Wall Street type of site, so you know about it. It's a daily read for you. But to the general public tech audience they may not pop in here it's interesting to me they often cover the happenings of tech companies on the upswing on a downswing i have a, a degree of curiosity there and they have been one of those sites that's been following the GameStop saga mm. very closely and i've obviously covered it a number of times here on the show i find it to be interesting uh obviously that brand, the concept of buying games, a big part of my life at one point in time, and the shifting marketplace, the new reality, and then everything that has happened on the globe, in the globe, on the globe recently to progress things even further as far as the no contact, no retail, no game trade-ins, all digital lifestyle that guys like you like to live. Maybe you don't like to live, but you are living. So you saw during the PlayStation 5 launch how they showcased, they showed off two models. They showed off the standard edition and they also showed off a digital only model. Now, the digital only model, actually to me, it looked a little nicer mm -hmm. because it had the full symmetry, not having to make space for the disk drive. Now, looks, don't, looks aren't the whole story. It doesn't really matter that much. I also spoke in that previous episode about how I don't really use physical media anymore either. I'm not judging anybody. I understand people have game collections. It's fine. I just don't personally do it. I like to have everything in there. I don't want to be putting discs in and out. Plus, I've owned enough game consoles in my life. And it's ridiculous because, you know, we were cleaning up the studio the other day. It's ridiculous how many game consoles. The only thing I ever had fail on those things were the disc drives. Mm -hmm. Unless you go back to those, the red ring of death on those Xbox 360s. I think I had one of those. But otherwise, I've had a couple disk drives go south, go poor on some PlayStation. So why even bother with it? Um, it's a mechanical thing. It just doesn't seem very futuristic. I understand you want the backwards compatibility. It's fine. But the deeper analysis here on how significant this, this move is, up until this point, Sony has encouraged a digital life with the PSN and 100 million active users on there. But they haven't really had a way to completely, from the gate, say, I'm fully digital. I'll never buy another disc again. And this is that thing. Mm -hmm. And so companies like GameStop are sitting there. They're already trending downwards. I don't know how much value the company has lost in the stock market. It's like 90% dip, I believe I read in this article. GameStop's, GameStop's stock has crashed nearly 90% over the past five years. Due to sluggish mall traffic, declining sales of new and used physical games, CEO changes, a failed bid to sell itself, and the suspension of its dividend. 
tons. The chips are stacked against GameStop already. And then Sony says, yeah, we're going to do a digital only version. No middleman. No middleman. No profit margin. Although profit margins on software were already little slivers to begin with. No, no more profit margins for any. We do it on the store. We do it ourselves. Hmm. We control the experience. PSN. Over 100 million active users. Again, according to this particular article. Now, Microsoft has tested this. I remember the, the huge backlash with the when the Xbox One originally came out. It's a huge backlash controversy. People cooled off. They kind of started to adopt a new technology. And then they put out uh, an S version, which was a digital version budget version and now there's rumors that since we've seen what sony's going to do with the ps5 offer a digital only could the next xbox also put out a, a more budget version to compete mono a mono tit for tat with sony remove the drive lower the cost a little bit and sell that model as well because if they do it then the writing's on the wall then what is gamestop what what do they what are they as a company and and how can they occupy space in the industry when people are chucking their disc drives out the door and saving money for doing so, saving 50, 100 bucks on a console. Mm -hmm. You got something to say. Well, I can feel it. I feel you have an opinion. You have a thought. No, here. I mean, it's a big three, right? You have Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. And if one pulls out, I mean, digital, it's kind of the future, right? Isn't it? It's right now. Not even the future, just right now already. Yeah. It's already a superior experience in most cases because if, even if you just think of the practical application, you pay the same amount of money, you don't have to get off your couch. Maybe some people... It's just... Actually, I should speak waiting. to these people because I hear about this as well. Not everyone has the fastest connection. Yes. So those individuals are going to be mad about it and maybe they can at least celebrate the fact that Sony's still going to do a, a version that can deal with physical media but if you take that piece out if you have good bandwidth then the user experience you download plus you never need to get up and change discs you just flip between games real quick you don't have to have a shelf for your collection of things they're all on the drive now maybe you can make the argument about storage but these next gen units well they're gonna have more storage mm -hmm. so like i said the writing's on the wall it's right now and it's the future and the, this particular writer here, Leo's son on The Motley Fool, thinks this is even worse news, even more bad news for GameStop in the stock market and in the store. That guy, however, he will continue to visit GameStop until the final day. He'll be there. He's a true... I mean, you can't get that experience. GameStop there. You can't get that experience on the couch. No. What he's having there. So maybe for that purpose alone, maybe that dude right there is actually a billionaire. He's a stealth billionaire. Uh -huh. And just so he can continue to have this experience, he's going to privately fund yeah, why not? the existence of GameStop. So anyway, yeah, PS5 consoles. You guys let me know down in the comments, please. I am, I am genuinely curious. Maybe you're not even in the market for a console, but if you imagine yourself purchasing a next generation console, PlayStation 5 or the new Xbox, would you opt for the digital only version or will you pay extra to have the disc drive? Because that's the way it looks like it's going to break down. So I'm curious what the, what the public thinks about it. Or maybe you're going to skip these consoles altogether. I'll hear you on that as well. Next one, Will, you probably saw this news floating around. Boston Dynamics will now sell any business, its own spot robot for $74,500. Not 70, don't say 75,000. It's 74,500. Yeah, get it right. It's a big number. It's fun, cool robot though. As far as robots you can own, man, it all crept up on us because I remember passing the video clips around early days of spot early days Boston Dynamics and thinking, oh man, that's so science fiction. And now, here you are, you can order this up on a website. Now, the immediate application for Spot kind of limited. People aren't really sure. What I, yeah. <laughs> I got this 75 grand. Uh, is, uh, maybe you're just buying an expensive pet at this point, but 
it turns out some people are actually putting spot into good use, particularly running tasks, going places that humans might not necessarily want to go and doing so on a frequent basis, being able to carry out somewhat tedious tasks. From what I can read in this particular article, it seems to be a common scenario. But a surprising thing to me also that popped up in this article is the fact that there's not that many of them out there. I didn't know. I mean, I knew they weren't selling them, but I was also aware that they were leasing them to certain operations. And so I'm going through here and I'm looking for the numbers, as you would. And they say to this date, the company has leased around 150 units in the wild. 150 uh, on planet Earth it's not a huge number. And apparently, there's been some slowdowns on the manufacturing. Since they put it on sale, they're hoping to produce a 1,000 spot robots this year. Mm -hmm. So there's probably going to be more of them out there. There certainly will be more of them out there. But there aren't that many of them out there yet. Mm -hmm. But this is where this story gets exciting. Because we have one right over there. <laughs> Teaser you alert yes. to the Lou Later uh, podcast family. I mean, the people on the Unbox Therapy channel uh, don't know that yeah. yet. They're going to find out later. Exclusive. It's an exclusive. This is when you need the sound effect. Boop, 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 boop. I know. I need to sync that up. Yeah, you need that sound effect. Stream deck here. Yeah. That's what I'm counting on you for, Will. Yeah. Uh, we have it sitting over there, and I think we're going to actually crack it open tomorrow and shoot a video. This is very exciting to me. Mm -hmm. It's kind of there's a childhood thing going on. Uh, I don't know. I get it. The Black Mirror stuff, I get it. The apprehension, I get it. People could use this technology the wrong way. I get it. 2020, not the best year so far. I hear all that. But just, I want you to imagine little Lou thinking about robots, watching science fiction. Interacting with real dogs. Inter yes. Oh, we have dogs to, yeah. to experiment with too. Spot is going to be here tomorrow. Dude, I just, I feel... I'm a little bit amped about it. I got to be honest. So anyway, you can buy the thing. Uh, they sent it to us, to be clear. We did not buy it, and it, we will be sending it back. But we get a chance to experiment with it. We get a chance to play around with it. And let me just ask you something, Will. Uh, since you set it up, set up getting the unit in the studio, have you looked into what's involved in actually getting it operational? Yeah. it's um, There's like a support YouTube page. You just watch the videos, and then like you're on your way. So you 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 have no apprehension. You're certain that tomorrow you're gonna have that baby just running running laps around well, the studio. I mean, I hope so. Cool. All right. It Exciting seems like it's times. Pretty to, pretty easy to use. That's Exciting cool. times. I sure hope that's the case. That sounds great to me. If that's the way it goes down, that sounds great to me. Because obviously, if they if they truly hope to put these things all over, yeah. uh, all over the place. It should be relatively easy to operate for all the various applications. Now, they did have a quote here on a Verge article regarding uh, whether or not people should be afraid of Spot. And the quote here is, it's a 30 kilogram robot that can be easily knocked over. Does that make you feel co more confident or? No, not at all. Okay. No. Okay. Because it's not, it's a 30 kilogram robot that has a billion sensors, can get back up. There's, there's more to the story. But anyway, they do say, so long as the robot's not being used to harm or intimidate people, they'll be okay with it. But they, they are still going to be kind of exhibiting some degree of scrutiny in, in, into, if you try to go right now, Will, and you just type in there, Warlord Willie Do, into the, <laughs> the username or whatever, and you try to order... 20 of them, they're not necessarily just going to run that and ship yeah, that out. Yeah. Apparently, any kind of big order, they're going to go over it with a fine-tooth comb. Because ultimately, if people do nasty stuff with this, it's going to reflect poorly on them. Exactly. So they've got to be aware of it, and we'll see what happens. But I think we're going to have a friendly experience tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that, and I'm pumped for it. All right? Right on. Let me just leave that out there. On another note, another thing I am pumped for, another thing that I like, you guys have probably noticed that 
on a show here i use i've used so many different laptops in this position right over here i'm constantly in search of whatever the next or interesting laptop will be for me uh, my favorite keyboard experience to this day on a laptop has been on the x series from lenovo and probably my favorite of the bunch at least recently it's actually sitting right there the uh, 15 inch the extreme model in the x series it comes with a gpu in there it's got all kinds of options for the display and of course plenty of configuration but ultimately for me it comes down to this this really unusual keyboard experience on a laptop in 2020 well they're going to update that laptop to the third generation and offer more performance and some some new features but they're also going to be updating their workstation line of laptops the p series including a laptop that really caught my attention the p1 gen 3 which is also a 15.6 inch laptop but it's kind of more targeted at the workstation uh, crowd the creative hmm. crowd a little bit more just because it's got the quadro graphics in it and the xeon processor in it that's quadro yeah, quadro uh, quadro uh, yeah it has quadro on quadro laptop. quattro it's a tough one man i i know yeah it's it does yeah it has a t2000 nvidia quadro and a 10th gen intel core or xeon so you can either get a 10th gen core series or you can get a xeon processor in a in a 15 inch relatively thin laptop the there's a a, a raid setup for storage up to four terabytes of nvme storage up to 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM. The display, 15.6 inch 4K OLED touch, or I believe there's a 600 nit IPS option as well. Very, uh, very bright, obviously. You know about nits. So some new stuff from Lenovo. I'm obviously paying attention. Maybe it'll send it over. I'm not really sure. But just imagine this. Switch to the next tab that I gave you there, Will. Just imagine this. ThinkPad P1 Gen 3, OLED, 4K OLED display, 8-core Xeon chip, and Quadro graphics in a laptop, in a, in a thin and light 15.6-inch laptop with a carbon fiber chassis in there. I mean, if it has, I want to, I hope it has some decent speakers in it. That's an area I was, I've been, don't, but, but look, there's no perfect laptop out there. Nonetheless, new stuff from Lenovo. If you've been following the channel for a while, you just know you know where I'm at with it. I'll check it out. I'll test it out. And I may, I may, be, I may be even curious about the 17-inch model. There's a monster 17.3-inch with a 94-watt-hour battery and up to 128 gigs of DDR4 RAM in there and a Quadro RTX 5000 if you want to get nasty. So who knows? It might sit right over here. Mm. And it'd just be humming along for you. And the microphone just... <gasps> And totally unnecessary as I browse the web. <laughs> you got to love it. Too much horsepower. Here's a cool one. I think you'll like this, Will. I don't actually know if you ever played this game. I've heard good things about this game. The Witcher. Have you ever played it? Uh, no, but I heard a lot of good things as well. Okay. So this is a game that at the time, I think it got some attention because of the... Uh, the, well, the graphics, because of the the, the world, the environment, the, uh, the, the imagery. Mm -hmm. But it turns out a lot of people enjoyed the game at a subpar experience from what they might have had they had different hardware. And of course, this is, this is often the case, right? You're playing, for example, you play this game or any game on a console, especially if it's one of the older versions of the consoles, you might be only playing a game 30 FPS. Hmm. And you might only be playing a game, well, in this case, look at this, the original PlayStation 720p and the original, or sorry, the original Xbox One 720p and the original PS4 900p. Hmm. Not, not even, we're not even 1080p, dude. And 30 FPS cap. So the developer says, look, the visuals took a hit. And we don't feel we feel like you didn't really experience the game as well as you could have. This is a weird thing. You don't expect a developer to do that or come out and say that. You, they got your money. You bought the game. What, what's going on? So, anyways, now 
they're giving the PC version in, you know, full PC experience. They're giving that game for free to anyone who bought the game mm -hmm. on another platform. Just mm -hmm. download it for free. And this is another thing that really kind of struck me is it's no DRM. Where did I read this? This is crazy. Right here. DRM. Even owners of the PC version can still snag the extra copy, which you can also gift to a friend if you want. If you want to keep it for yourself, it's a DRM free copy, unlike Steam or the Epic Game Store. Mm. It's really interesting. What are they doing? What, are they trying to prime prime their customers for something? Uh, for the, uh, they want to make people feel warm and fuzzy. Is it an experiment they're running? All kinds of uh, speculation. There's obviously speculation in the art article. I have my own speculation as to what, what might be going on. Uh, There's a lot of diehard fans in The Witcher 3 uh -huh. and The Witcher 2. So, so maybe it's just fan service? Here's an update to the article. The game is going to be available through their game library app. Sadly, Switch owners got snubbed from the promo. So Nintendo Switch people got snubbed, but they've been doing well. The Nintendo Switch people, they got games. They're all, pl everyone's Animal playing. Animal Crossing. Yeah, everyone's playing Animal Crossing anyway, so they're fine. Can't play that anywhere else. Bit of a shame though. Uh, there, Yeah, so there's speculation that it's part of them building up their game store to get a bunch of signups that they're going to then collect the, and they got the game sitting there anyways, so hmm. maybe they get a lot some people into their ecosystem this way, but I don't really care. Look, the, the way I look at it is you could buy the game a day ago. They do the promo. And if you were a fan in the past, here you have another option free, DRM free. I think it's kind of cool. And you know, maybe it's time to give it a crack. I just need a friend who can send me their DRM free yeah. uh, version because they said you can gift it. So yeah. just saying. But of course, this is also going to ignite all the people that say, I've been telling you, what are you playing that game on PlayStation? Uh, uh. But I should say to the PlayStation fans, console fans, when the next gen came out, the PS4 Pro, obviously the resolution went up and the frame rate, rate went up. So it got closer to the PC experience. Hmm. But they say the PC experience, full pop, still the way to go. Maximum immersion graphics. This next one's for you, Willie. Do you're a big AI guy? Pay attention, and you're an artist. So this one has just got everything you need in it. Mm. Deep face drawing AI can turn simple sketches into detailed photo portraits. Now we've looked at something like this in the past, but this is a is a more sophisticated update to the technology where it can take an even more rudimentary drawing now, run it against its own version of the neural network, and sort of create the these uh, uh, complex human images based on averages. So based on the most likely way a person might look, given only a line drawing. And you can play a little bit of this clip here if you want to just be careful with it, I guess. But you can play a little bit of this clip. And what you'll see is as, as this individual goes in there, and just draws essentially what, what looks like, I mean, it's like a stick man version. It's like a, well, it's better than my drawing still, I'll be honest. But it's just a couple of lines. I mean, it's seven or eight lines and you have this complex, sophisticated, photorealistic image that's generated from it. It's really incredible. This isn't the first time we've seen tech like this. There used to be something called Pix to Pix Autofill Tool. But this is the most advanced to date, and it doesn't require the same level of detail in source sketches as previous iterations have. It works through probability. So it obviously has a very large database of real human images. And so, so given that database, it can figure out what average eyebrows look like or an average chin. And then it can contrast or compare that to your version of what a chin is. Apparently there's 17,000 faces, 17,000 sketches and corresponding photos to this point. It's still super early days in this kind of stuff, 
But when it comes to AI, when it comes to uh, face recognition, all all of the eh, eh. Well, does that one freak you out? I don't know. Yeah, if someone pretends to be me or how you they, or like a family member. Or how do they do it know? though? How, how how does it work? How does how do algorithms work? No, 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 not how do algorithms work. What I mean to say is what is the scam? How does somebody use this in a nefarious way? Maybe they caught surveillance of, you know, like a some sort of murder. Jeez, man, why do you think you take it to the far extreme? Thinking it's some kind of simple scam yeah, here. You go all push out. Push over like a grandma or something. Okay. And then <laughs> it's still terrible. superimpose your face. You know, it's right. It gets, it's terrible. It's a terrible thing. It's all terrible. Yeah. The way you're saying it. But yeah, I, I suppose if we're talking interchangeable faces, if we're talking simple face mapping, simple ID, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously the implications are pretty massive what you can do with technology like this. People are working on it. You have to think there's a commercial application that isn't necessarily nefarious as well. Uh, let me say, for example, IDing an actual criminal who did something terrible. And then the, the composite sketch could then give the right. law enforcement something a lot closer to look for than a line drawing. Mm -hmm. But some artists are pretty good. Some artists are pretty but 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 those artists that are pretty good don't have the neural map in their head of the law, the averages, right? If you, if this software, let's say has, let's say the software at some point, now, now this is where it gets creepy, but let's say the software through closed circuit cameras that are everywhere had effectively built a database of every face that is there. Yeah. And it could just match the composite sketch with the most, the closest mm -hmm. right away. You see where I'm going here? Because mm -hmm. it can scan it quickly against that whole database. Mm. So it, that's beyond what any individual artist could ever be capable of. Yeah. That's beyond the human capacity at that point. Even if that's the gr a great artist who has the averages front of mind and knows, oh, lips normally look like this and mm -hmm. chins normally look like that. Yeah. So computers, when it comes to certain tasks, my good, hum, the human can't compete in certain tasks. This is one of them. Sheesh. Anyway, that's the latest tech in that, in that arena. Lots happening. This story goes well with the Boston Dynamics one. <laughs> Why do they feel like they're in the same? He's got a camera. Why is it he? I don't know. It. Oh, boy. It has a camera. It's doing the mapping. Well, they we named it Spot. We could have we could have Spot do the mapping, couldn't we? Hmm. Yeah. Who knows what we're going to be capable of once we once we crack Spot open? This whole operation might change forever. Yeah. Spot's gonna be standing right there. It's gonna be one of the cameras helping grannies up. We're gonna do people who push that's them right. Over. We're gonna go so far in the other direction that people are gonna say they're gonna stop questioning, or maybe that's the entry point. That's where the movie goes wrong. Because here we are, this platform, we convince people. We're like, look, it's perfect. It's fine. It's helping the world. Carrying groceries. Yeah. Next thing you know, that's, that's the entry it was looking for. Yeah. It's that little small opening. Of course, I'm joking, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have fun tomorrow. Technology, it's fantastic. You know it. That's why you're watching this. That's another episode. Thank you to you. And thank you, of course, to Mr. Willie Do.